Hi, welcome to Max Journey, and I'm Mac. Thank you for watching the video. Comment, subscribe to the channel. Today is episode number seven, and I titled it Searching for an Identity, because that's what I was doing. After being deported in 2011 to Haiti and not knowing anything of the Haitian culture, but knowing that being in a new country, I had to keep an open mind and the workforce in Haiti, you really have to be open minded and have and be able to multitask, you know, and because you never know what job is going to be available for you. They created the center, the reintegration center for deportees, and they wanted a staff of deportees to run it. So I got selected me and along with eight other deportees to be part of just the staff. And they put me on security because it was a good opportunity because I worked with um, just a, a, a set of guys who was deported just like me. And we really just looked forward to this opportunity and being young, I was really young at that time. I want to say I was the age of 26, you know, and, and being there and not knowing what the country had for me and and i'm thinking me being in the security lane okay this is what i'm gonna do in haiti you really have to be open-minded and you really got to be um you really can't have no complex when you're working in haiti especially working in a third world country and in from 2013 to probably the middle of 2014 i worked there and the contract was over with and in 2014 like i was saying i was doing construction and it was up and down, very hard work, and not knowing just that you build houses with bricks in Haiti. You know, houses are made totally different. 90% of concrete, bricks, and, um, and, and it just gave me an opportunity just to learn Haiti and move around in Haiti, going to the, um, the province. Every time we'll go to like, uh, as I would say, a different state inside of Haiti, I'll meet another deportee and just seeing how they living and they'll just be like, hey, Matt, man, you remember me? You helped me at the plane and you know, and I was like, wow, for real. So that just inspired me to keep doing and continue to just keep just helping. For me, what it really was, it was like I almost was working at the plane and the other job, this construction job I was doing, I was volunteering, but at the end, but I was really getting paid at the construction job and I wasn't getting paid volunteering just to show you how where my heart was at and where my passion was at. You just see and hear other deportees' testimonies of how they're living and what they got going on and how Haiti's been treating them. So I was working for, he said, Mac, um, won't you go work at this new club that they're opening up? In, in in the middle of Petronville, which is in the heart of the metropolis area, which is Port-au-Prince. And I said, okay, no problem. What's the name of the club? It's called Cary Bay Hotel. And within Cary Bay Hotel, they had a club that they just opened. It was called Asu. And I worked at Asu. And the funny thing about Asu is spelled A-S-U, which if you spell it backwards, is U-S-A. And you know, um, it just really gave me a chance and the opportunity to just see the different levels of classes in Haiti. You know, there's a there's a super rich class, upper upper class, and then you have the middle class, and obviously you have the um you know the poor class. And being um the head security at this club, I had the opportunity to screen people because you didn't pay to get in the club. It was basically you had to know somebody to get in the club. And working at Asu. It just gave me a fame that I didn't even realize or knew, you know, and a lot of people like, who are you? Why you um acting like this? And I tell them, I'll be like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Mac, you know, and they're like, oh, you, 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 you fresh to Haiti. You must not know who I am. And, and, and really I didn't, I wasn't trying to just be like an enforcer or nothing, but I didn't know, you know, being back in Haiti, I, I didn't, I, I, I was, I listened the Haitian music, but I didn't, I, could, I didn't know who this artist was singing or this actor or this owner of this big business. And this is a famous businessman or this family runs this part of Haiti. I didn't know these things. So it ultimately gave me the opportunity to just 
um, place other deportees that I knew who were struggling in different positions so they could have opportunities, so they could have jobs. You know, from 2017, from there, I got another job and it was a contract for a year where I was doing translation. And I was doing translation for an elder gentleman and he was a um, tractor driver or farmer and he was showing the Haitian locals how to um, grow grains bigger grains in Haiti and I was translating for him because he couldn't speak he, sp he could speak English but he couldn't speak Creole so I was doing the majority of his translation for me and what that the opportunity for me to speak Creole better it boosted up my Creole to a level that I would never even expect it because coming into the job yeah I spoke perfect English or I spoke English enough to relate to Leslie, which is the, um, the the contractor who is showing the Haitians how to plant these bigger grains. But to the Haitians, my Creole was like subpar. So that just forced me to constantly work on my Creole, constantly work on my Creole to the point where I could hold full in-depth conversations of telling them how the mechanics of the tractor work, how to set the grains six or seven inches apart Creole, because you think your creole is up the par till you have a real conversation with a haitian you're like man my creole is nothing like theirs just um moving around and working that job for almost i want to say for eight months um but the gentleman who came from america he ended up getting sick because he was older he was in his he was about 66 years old and his name his name was leslie you know, he showed me a lot how to drive a tractor. Same time, I'm doing all these different jobs. I'm still connected to the deportee community, and I never failed from going to the plane. I made that just my 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 a, a religious a a, a a um just a calling. Every third Tuesday of every month, I always make a way to go to the plane so I could help a deportee who's just coming in and not knowing what he's in for not knowing that hey man you you come into haiti and this is what you're in for you know um and that and, and that was always even though it was a not I, I didn't get paid to do that it was just a just a volunteer job but it was a job that was more than a job for me it was a compassion for me you know i really love doing that and even to this day, me being back in America, I still am an advocate and I still reach out to other deportees who's going through whatever they may be going through. And I just want to be there to inspire them. 2018, um, the contract eventually ended from working with Leslie because he got sick. He had to go back to America. So I worked at this um, place, a gambling spot called Pagash Palm, you know, um, and working in Pagash Palm, a it gave me the chance to see how the local Haitians was hustled, you know, cause they'll, they'll spend all day working and you'll think they'll go home with the, the money that they made from working these hard jobs, but they'll come and gamble it and try to flip it. And then it opened my eyes to that whole culture, that gambling culture and playing um, boleto, which is called bolet, which is um, related to playing the lottery in Haiti and how that just, just showed me like, wow, they have this in Haiti, you know, and um, that opportunity right there was an opportunity that I had to have because it obviously pulled me in. Cause I was like, man, this is how they this is how they stretch out their 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 money. Cause from the from them working and getting their money, they'll go gamble it, and then you'll have guys on the side, and they'll have this thing called a sol where you, and a soul is basically everybody put their money together and um, if it's 10 people, they'll each put a certain amount of money and that one person will get it this week and the next person will get it that week. So that opened my eyes to how the Haitians were getting ahead and how they were saving money and how you can save money even though you're not making a lot of money. So that opened my eyes. And like I said, this whole journey in Haiti, it, it came through different opportunities for me searching for my identity you know and each job gave me the skill set that i needed to eventually become and find my identity in haiti which is an advocate and which was and still is an advocate for deportees you know and i just want to drop i just wanted to put this video out here out there so people could know on this journey 
from darkness to light that um even though yeah you know i i i'm not perfect i did a lot of um things in haiti it was a part of a lot of different activities but at the same time i always managed to stand firm and continue to help continue to search and look for positive ways to to make an income you know and um i just want to thank y'all for watching this video um subscribe to the channel and have you and have you not subscribed yet please subscribe you know um this is max journey I love all y'all in Jesus' name. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about my father. That's why I stopped that 2018, because I'm going to be talking about my father. Um, you know, I'm going to be getting into just meeting um, Meliana, you know, which was um, just, a, a, just a wow. It was really just a life-changing experience meeting her, because she just opened my eyes and gave me the opportunity just to be the man that God intended me to be. You know, I love all y'all and um, thank you for watching the video.